Hi, Linda Murray and my co-host Alina Popa, FemFlex in the house, and we have a special guest, two times world champion, currently the best in the world, women's physique champion, Sarah Viegas. Hi, how are you guys? So Great, happy Sarah. To be here. Oh, thank you so much for, for joining us and just gosh. Just an amazing uh, career. Amazing. I know, we are, we are always so impressed. Mm -hmm. When we have an Olympiad in the house, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we are really honored to have you here, uh, Sarah. You know, I've always thought, I've always thought like when I see champions reaching out to the star, I want to know where they start from. Because those small beginnings, the sprouts are so beautiful. So where did you start? What attracted you? How did you start on this beautiful path in your career? I think, well, I've always been athletic, like as a kid. Um, you know, I did a multitude of sports. Um, I did track and field, I did basketball. Um, I was more heavily into like dance and gymnastics. So I was always very much like active. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually didn't get introduced into working out until I met my husband, which was um, like right after college. Oh. And I just like fell in love. Um, mm -hmm. It was, you know, like a challenge every day. I really liked that. Um, it's a it's a sport where you kind of like compete against yourself. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know you compete with others, but it's very much kind of like an individual sport. Um, and you know, track and field is like that. Mm -hmm. Gymnastics is mm -hmm. like that. So I think you know that kind of um, yeah. And I just like fell in love instantly. Um, and then I you know trained and bodybuilded I guess for about four years before I did my first um, NPC show, mm -hmm. um, and that was in 2016. Actually, that was I looked at pictures of you at your first NPC show ever, and that was quite impressive. You know, you you had a great conditioning, which of course everybody knows uh, that great conditioning is your signature trait. But that first uh, show you did. You had an amazing shape, amazing conditioning, and you could already see that you actually have a beautiful flowing physique mm -hmm. and great lines. Mm -hmm. and if yeah. I met you there in 2016, I was like, she's gonna get some mm -hmm. someday, some places. Yeah. Yeah. But with your history, that really explains it, you know, participating in, in track and field. So what what event? Were you a sprinter? I would assume looking at your your you know, glutes, I'm thinking, yeah, it's powerful, so. I did, I did the 400 meter dash. Okay. Um, and then I did long jump and triple jump. Okay, So wow. those are like my three main events. Yeah, so yeah. 400 is around one, one time. time. Mm -hmm. You are a badass girl. <laughs> that, that event, fast. I know, it's hard. <laughs> It's hard, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, so that really explains it. And also you're, you know, you informed me now like of the gymnastics. Your posing is so, you're very meticulous. And I watch you, you know, when you do your mandatories and to be completely honest, um, your first win, I sat there and I was like, she's just on point, like pose for pose. I mean, you have the physique and you have everything there, but you know how to present it and like from every angle. And so no question, the winner. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, everybody talks about, you know, practicing posing, but, mm -hmm. you know, just, and that's one thing that I'm very fortunate in. Um, you know, my husband and I, we do a lot of our posing. He does a lot of my posing um, basically every night. Is and he it's into just, gymnastics too? No. <laughs> might have to bring him out here and do a couple cartwheels. <laughs> Um, but you know, to your point, it's always like, okay, this pose looks great, but how do we, you know, let's try this, let's try this. Mm -hmm. What looks the best? How do we make every single body part, mm -hmm. you know, really shine? Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that we are very, like you said, intentional about, you know, mm -hmm. being very meticulous with. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. yeah. So fast forward, fast forward from 2016, if your first NPC show in Texas, then you turn pro in uh, 2017. So next the, year uh -huh. already. Wow. wow. Yeah. And then, um, so I did Team Universe Team in Universe, 2017. Yeah. That's when I earned my pro card. Um, and then in 2018, I did the Chicago Pro. That mm -hmm. was my pro debut. Um, and then that was the first year that I qualified to the Olympia. Mm. So Wow. That's awesome. So how did that, that Olympia go for you? I got 10th in my first Olympia. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But then next year... In 2019, 19. I did the Atlantic Coast Pro yes. to qualify for the 2019 Olympia. 
and then that was the year that I got second. So you got second. So how did you improve from 10th in uh, 19, in 18 to second mm -hmm. in 19 in a single year? I think um, my first Olympia, so my first Olympia, that was my fourth show ever. Okay. Um, yeah. So even though, you know, you're at the Olympia, it's, I was still very young and new in the sport. Um, so I think just, you know, competing at that elite level, at the mm -hmm. pro level for another year, um, just being one year older as a bodybuilder, mm -hmm. um, just being able to, you know, train the entire year and, um, you know, just kind of, just be in it for a little bit longer, be mm -hmm. a little bit more mature, um, both as a human and as a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I think mm -hmm. was the main difference, really. So you looked at all aspects of, um, especially being an athlete, uh, you didn't leave any stone unturned. So I'm sure you improved your posing because I, I remember the first time learning, trying to transition from like cheerleading to understanding mandatories and the importance of like we were talking about positioning. So I'm sure you'd like, the first time, like, oh wow, I can be better at my, you know, front double bicep or my, you know, abdominals and thighs. Yeah, of course. And I mean, even and part of it too is, you know, you have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you know, you say, put your feet like this, put your hands like this. Mm -hmm. But as you develop and you learn your physique, and you say, well, why don't I, you know, try my feet doing this way, or mm -hmm. turn my hip this way, or mm -hmm. try it the other side? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you kind of just again, you know, in your beginnings, you kind of just do what works, right, mm -hmm. to kind of get you through it before you mm -hmm. really kind of master the element of posing, like you mm -hmm. master the weightlifting mm -hmm. and the diet and the training and all that. Um, so I think that was, yeah, another big element mm -hmm. of just kind of, again, being mature as a bodybuilder. So do you um, feel like you've mastered, like, like where is there room for improvement in like your posing or something? Because I know we're always, there's always something we can be better at. Yeah, I think it's just like kind of the refinement because as your physique develops, you know, you say, okay, well, you know, mm -hmm. my triceps are a little smaller, so let me pose it this way. Or, you know, my legs look really good here, so let me do it that mm -hmm. way. So as your physique kind of develops and you bring up this body part and, you know, you kind of just refine this whole package, mm -hmm. obviously your, your posing has to mm -hmm. reflect that. So there are always, you know, changes that you're doing, probably just about to every single pose. Mm -hmm. um, again, just to kind of like best showcase that physique, not the physique that you had the mm -hmm. year before or the mm -hmm. show before, you know? Mm -hmm. To me, it's very impressing that, you know, you have refined your physique to that level of hardness and popping and 3D in such a short time. Obviously, you have a lot of uh, genetics in there, you know, that wouldn't have happened so fast. Of course, there's a lot of hard work, but it's just beautiful, like how your body responded in relatively a short time to bring you to, you know, be the first one in the world two years in a row. And talking about posing, like how did you discover your signature pose? <laughs> how did you like, okay, this is it, this is amazing, because everybody's in awe with your, your pose, your side pose of your glutes, your striations. Actually, so if you look back, if you go back and you look up, and I should not tell people this, but <laughs> go back and look up pictures from my very first show, 2016, I actually did that, I did a variation of that same pose. Okay. And what happened was I was, um, we were choreographing my routine, and I don't know what I was doing, something on the ground anyway. And I go to stand up and I have that one leg out and Ali was like, go back down on the ground. And I was, you know, very lean and, um, you know, cause I was dieted down and he was like, that looks really good. We need to put that in your routine. Mm -hmm. You know, it shows like all of your quads. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of, it was happened by accident, but I guess mm -hmm. it was a good accident. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, you know, incorporated it in my routine, you know, ever since. It's obviously mm -hmm. improved a lot as I have more yes. muscle now. And obviously mm -hmm. but, uh, it only got better, right? Yes, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. you look so, I mean, you know, the standard, um, like, you look really healthy, like, the ability to have straight glutes, and um, just, you look healthy. And so I guess with that question, so many athletes, like, especially in the women's physique division, because you guys are fierce. When it comes to conditioning, like, at the Olympia, all of you guys are in great shape, you know? But there are athletes out there that, of course, like, let's say someone is in the top five or let's say the girl that's 11th and she strives because they want that title. And then they don't have that, maybe necessarily a definition that you have. Your genetics, obviously, and, and your history, it's there. So what would you say or the advice you would give to uh, competitors out there that 
they, sh they don't have to strive to do what you do or have what you have. Like how do, you know, especially with health, in regards to health, how would you, what would you give them as far as advice? Well, I think um, one of the main things when people talk about conditioning, mm -hmm. I think people need to realize that there are multiple layers to that. You have leanness, you have dryness, and you have fullness. Mm. And those three things are all very separate. And when you master each one of those, that's what gives conditioning. Mm. So just to say somebody's in shape or somebody's conditioned, you know, as bodybuilders, that's those are common terms within the community because we know what mm -hmm. they mean, but I think over time people just you know, throw that word around and it just means the same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of times you can have people who aren't lean enough and they say, well, I was too full. Mm -hmm. You weren't too full, you weren't lean enough. Yeah. Um, and so you have to remember that you, know, you can only achieve conditioning if you master all three of those. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'll be honest, I think it all starts with leanness. Mm -hmm. um, it's very hard to, you know, achieve like a full and, um, you know, dry mm -hmm. conditioned look mm -hmm. um, if you're not lean enough mm -hmm. and you're able to bring in fullness if you're lean enough. So they, mm. they all go hand in hand. And so to just look at one thing and say conditioning, I need to be mm -hmm. conditioned. You have to look at all three of those elements mm. and, and master all three of them separately mm -hmm. um, and you know again just remember that it's it's a total package it's mm -hmm. you know multiple elements not just one um, and so I think maybe need to mm -hmm. to change the the thinking and the approach in that regard mm, it's great so then that means that for example in the off season because you said it's a complete package so you're talking about you know you can't just jump into a diet like do whatever you want to do, eat whatever you want to eat all year long, you know, of and course. then expect to, right? Well, right, you know, and one extreme or the other is not, is not good. Staying too lean obviously keeps you from growing, but obviously, you know, acquiring too much body fat in the off season keeps you from growing as well. Um, and you lose your shape, it, you, it can be easy to lose sight of mm -hmm. what you need to work on mm -hmm. because you, you can't see enough, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then also it's, you know, you can't expect to realistically, you know, lose 50 pounds of body fat mm -hmm. for a show in a mm -hmm. matter of 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just, it's not enough time, mm -hmm. you're not gonna look good. Yeah. Um, so I think maintaining a good balance in the off season of like, you know, full enough in the mm -hmm. sense of body fat, that's um, right. yet still lean enough to where, you know, we're, you're a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you need to, to train and, mm -hmm. and carry yourself as such in, in all elements. Mm -hmm. um, and it's only gonna help you improve. So, you know, I think it's important, like I said, to just have a balance in the off season so that way you're not feeling like you're scrambling or like mm. killing yourself um, because you're starting from a good place. Mm -hmm. And now you're just like polishing that diamond mm -hmm. throughout the course of the, mm -hmm. you know, your competition these are, prep. These are all, all beautiful and mm -hmm. valid points. And I have a question for you regarding to dryness, but I'm going to ask you this after this commercial break. You diet down. Train hard and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. And we're back here with Sarah Villegas, and I have a question for her regarding, as she was talking before, dryness. So, well, I just saw a post you did just a few days ago with your uh, dry glutes two weeks before the show, right? Because you mentioned leanness, you mentioned dryness, and you mentioned fullness, right? So you were explaining mm. uh, how you achieve that look. So when I saw that, I was a little bit uh, uh, pleasantly surprised because I remember in, during my days, you're like, you really hope, you know, <laughs> in the last day that you're going to dry out and you're going to show those striations. Like the, the day of the show was the peak day. So to see in your post that you actually reach that dryness two weeks before and and then you fill out, you know, so then you, you're getting drier and then softer for the stage. So I don't think that a lot of people can afford that. So tell us a little bit more about that. Um, well, I would say, you know, it's, 
you have a look that mm-hmm. you want to um, achieve. And so you kind of have to just be really in tune with your body and track your own self, you know? So you never want to be ready the day of the show, meaning you're behind at that point. You always need mm-hmm. to put yourself in a situation where I am ready to kind of be comfortable into the show. Because everybody knows those last couple of weeks of dieting, it's very difficult, you're tired, um, you know, you're just very, very low energy. And so it's not realistic for you to think that you can keep going, um, you know, keep trying to get yourself ready. You need to be ready, you know, so allow yourself time to, to go into the show and worry about your posing and worry about, you know, all these things mm-hmm. that you need to worry about. Um, and so it's really, it's just a matter of, you know, being prepared, um, getting ready ahead of schedule to allow yourself that time, especially in the women's categories, mm-hmm. um, to where, you know, you put in all the hard work early. Mm-hmm. So that way, when you come to stage, you have that really pleasant, feminine, full, very, very muscular mm-hmm. look. Um, and, you know, it's just um, the process of kind of, you know, bringing in that fullness, obviously mm-hmm. carving up into the show to where, again, the muscle is just fully dilated as much as it can be, um, just to give that, you know, the mm-hmm. roundness and the, mm-hmm. you know, the deep separations. And again, that that very soft conditioned look, mm. um, still conditioned, not soft, yes. but the soft conditioned soft look. Soft conditioned, mm-hmm. yeah. But do you, so do you carb depletes to reach that level of dryness? Like th- that long before? Uh, I mean, the carbs are low, yeah. um, but you know, it's, and, it, and again, it kind of changes also. Like there's, there's the 80% outline. And then obviously as you develop and you become, you know, a better bodybuilder year after year, um, that last, you know, 10% gets changed day by day. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one thing that I'm, like I said, you know, very fortunate that I have my mm-hmm. husband to look at me every single day and we kind of make those calls on the fly. Um, but yes, you know, your carbs are a lot lower. Um, your cardio is a lot higher. Yep. And then as you go into the show, obviously the cardio is reduced and the carbs increase. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that allows, again, you know, the muscle to really fill mm-hmm. out um, and to bring those, you know, those subtle striations mm-hmm. in the full muscle bellies with all the roundness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, that was definitely a post that I think impressed a lot of people. You had a lot of comments. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really remarkable. So I wanted to, to bring that up because you don't see that every day. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, it, I think it was important to share, um, you know, because there, um, you know, there are conversations sometime around, you know, um, conditioning and yeah. mm-hmm. just to, to really highlight the fact that you um, that you have to put in the hard work and just because you look like a, just because you have a certain look at a certain point of time that doesn't mean that mm-hmm. that's what's judged on stage mm-hmm. um, or that that's what you look like on stage mm-hmm. and so just you know really sending that message out to the other especially the up and coming you know women's physique competitors mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, to know this is you know how you should be working and this is what you should be mm-hmm. um, looking to achieve on stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very informative. Um, glad that we have the opportunity to sit down and ask you these questions because, um, like you said, you even mentioned, you know, being especially a woman and what you have to, like, because there's a difference. So maybe expound on that and just talk about, like, the your process because, I mean, again, Men and women, and today, a lot of the men look at you and they think, God, look at her, her glutes, look at her conditioning. And um, I think you're perfect to expound and to talk about, like you said, fullness, you said uh, dry. Dryness. And 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 leanness. leanness, you know? Yeah, so I mean, just to reiterate what I said earlier, you know, I think leanness is the foundation of it all. And... I'll be honest, you know, leanness is the hardest. It takes the most discipline. It's, you know, you have to push through it when you're really tired and you still have to do, you know, another hour of cardio after you did one in the morning. Um, You know, being very disciplined on your diet, you know, a lot of people will say, well, I don't want to get too small or lose Mm -hmm. muscle or, oh, Mm -hmm. I was so hungry or, you know, and a lot of people, look, if you compete, you're working very, very hard. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not easy to to do a bodybuilding show mm-hmm. or to qualify to the Olympia to play, you know, these, this is not an easy feat. Um, so when you say, you know, I'm working hard, well, you just have to work a little bit that much harder. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it, this is, bodybuilding is a sport of just continuous discipline. You know, 
eight mm-hmm. titles. It's mm-hmm. it's not it's not mm-hmm. like oh I just diet for eight weeks mm-hmm. you know eight years in a row. This is yes. this is a, a lifestyle of discipline, um, and so exercising that in your off season during your competition and in those you know that critical time period leading up to the show. Um, you know, I would just say that that discipline has to be just so laser focused mm-hmm. um, to you know to be able to present mm-hmm. what you've worked so hard for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wanted to, to ask what made you decide to you went directly for the physique division, right? But you said that in the beginning you were not a big girl to start with, right? So what? Because most of the time people start with figure, maybe. So what made you go directly into the physique, right? How did you know that that is your division? So I started working out right when the uh, women's physique division okay. started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was right at that cusp, like the 2012, 2013 mm-hmm. was you know re- when I got into weightlifting, and I just thought it was it just wow, like beautiful. You know mm-hmm. these women that were you know very muscular yet still very very feminine, mm-hmm. um, and it just I thought it was badass. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, I, like I said, you know, I have a history of being in sports and I'm very, very disciplined. I really like to work hard. I love a challenge. Um, and so, you know, just going for that extra le- level of muscularity, um, I, was, I was all for it. You know, I like to lift heavy weights. I like to, you know, train really hard. And so it was just, it was perfect for me. So I'm, I'm asking you this because there is obviously a lot of love that you pour into this division. So you started with that, too, right? And then you became extremely successful in being the face of the sport. And not only that, but somehow in a small way, you actually stepped on the other way of the promoter. And you do that by supporting the division, right? So I know that you um, offer, you're a sponsor of the division for Pittsburgh Pro, right? For the first time ever, right? Mm-hmm. So how does that work? work when you are a sponsor of the division? Uh, well, I mean, kudos to the Pro League for adding mm-hmm. it. I mean, mm-hmm. that I was, I'm just so excited that they, and I just want to say thank you to them um, for, for bringing that, um, for women's physique, bringing women's physique to, you know, the, the Pro mm-hmm. League's, you know, home show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, you know, it's just a small way that I can give back. This sport has given me so much. Mm-hmm. Um, like you mentioned, I am, mm-hmm. you know, a two-time champion. I'm, you know, have all of this, mm-hmm. you know, great success from it. And so it's just like such a small portion of what um, I can do. Mm-hmm. And I just think it's such a, just such a fun and great and exciting time to be a female competitor yeah. um, in this sport right now. Mm-hmm. With you know, I was looking at the the calendar. I think we have like now 25. Um, I wanted women's to ask physique. you that you already yes. shows, <laughs> and it's I it's mm-hmm. incredible, you know. Yeah. Um, and so just to just to be a part of that is I just mm-hmm. you know it's it's just. The it's, smallest thing I can do that, to give back. It is yeah. great that you can associate your name and then actually encourage the girls to compete there. Mm-hmm. But you do that in a different way too in Texas Pro, right? Because you have your uh, Sarah Villegas uh, physique distinction. What is the name of the award yeah, you give? The, the Sarah Villegas Women's Physique Women's Distinction physique Award. Distinction mm-hmm. Award, which is quite substantial. Wow. I mean, it's fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars. That's a lot of money that you mm-hmm. put out of your pocket. So, um, how did that come? I mean, like, where did you get that idea? Is the same passion that you have for the division? Yes. So it started last year. Um, last year was the first year that I did mm-hmm. it, um, and obviously that was after winning my first um, Olympia title. And you know, to piggyback on what I already said, it's just such a great time. Um, women's physique is booming. It's you know we've been around for almost ten years. Um, yeah. And you know, just to I just, I love the category. I want to give back to the category. I want to continue seeing this category grow. Mm -hmm. You know, right now I'm still a competitor, but I want something that's going to, Mm -hmm. you know, continue to help this um, Mm -hmm. category in this sport after I'm done competing, you know, Mm -hmm. one year. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, it's something, like I said, that I want to keep doing year after year um, and just as a way to to give back and do what I love and, and, you know, help something that I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. It is very beautiful. When I became aware of that, you know, I was like, okay, if I was, you know, like an upcoming physique competitor and I knew that the current Miss Olympia is putting up this money, which is, I don't know how even how many times Mm -hmm. more than, five times more than the first place, right? Mm -hmm. I would totally be going for that and I would want it and I would just like be like in awe Mm -hmm. and with a lot of respect, you know, Mm -hmm. that actually the Miss Olympia 
is offering this money mm -hmm. to the winner of this show. So that is that is fantastic, mm -hmm. and I want to congratulate you for Thank that you. initiative. Mm -hmm. You, you yeah. don't see that too often in our industry. <laughs> no, no, you don't. You don't. So you know what? Let's take a quick break, and we will return and pick up with you, Sarah, as now being a business one, participating, actually being a role model. back here in our studio on FanFlex Friday with Sarah Villegas. Thank you again for this amazing interview. And we have another topic about, you know, you supporting the division. So that is the Arnold, right? So me as a female bodybuilder right back in the day, I know that uh, I think 2013 was the last mm -hmm. edition of it. Mm -hmm. So I know how it felt to be taken away from the Arnold. And I know that this year they will not have the division again, together with the 212, right? So obviously there are some decision being made there. But what, uh, what got my attention was the fact that actually you went on Instagram and you made a post and you offered to put up all the prize money for this division, right? In mm -hmm. order for Arnold to have it, right? And first of all, I'm curious, why did you do it, right? And then uh, second, did you get any answer? So when I um, heard that the Arnold was not going to be including women's physique, I'm not going to lie. I was, you know, I was disappointed. I was very upset. Um, you know, that's, uh, I was, I prepped to do it the year before and I wasn't able to do it. I had to pull out um, a couple weeks before because I had an injury. Um, it just, it didn't, it didn't feel good. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, I empathized, I, I figured how I felt and I empathized, you know, with all of my fellow women's physique competitors mm -hmm. and I'm sure that they were just as upset. So I thought, you know what, I can't think of any reason why, you know, it wouldn't be held. Maybe it's a financial issue. I'm willing, I want to do it. I want to, you know, give the girls that stage. Um, and so that's where that, um, mm -hmm. post came from. Now, I never um, heard anything back directly from the um, Arnold Sports. I did get a third-party communication, um, but, you know, I, from them directly, I never mm -hmm. received anything back. So what was the third-part communication? Um, Denying? Obviously, the division is not there. Well, right. So um, I was, you know, I was pretty much told in one way or another um, that it just, it was, it was bigger than just, you know, no amount of money you can pay. Um, there was, you know, other like scheduling and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it just wasn't going to happen this year. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that is you personally, you know? You know, I don't know. Um, and I don't, I, I would hate to, to speak on behalf mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. um, anybody else, especially when I don't, you know, know all the details of what's going on. Um, but I just, I think, um, I do think it's unfortunate. Um, but, you know, they haven't said anything about next year or anything like that. So um, who knows if it's just this year. Um, you know, I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, like I have to say that, you know, when that happened back in the day, you know, with my division, I was very upset, you know, um, and I felt somehow, you know, as I'm not, my division is not being valued enough, you know. Well, that, that went uh, farther to just being dropped out of Olympia too, but uh, seeing that, you know, uh, like even for the women's bodybuilding division, now we have 18 shows, so it 
it got back in the Olympia, it got back everywhere, yet it still make its way back in the Arnold. And on top of that, they dropped two div divisions, right? So I know there were speculations as of, you know, financial reasons because they have increased the men's classic physique uh, awards, right, uh, prize money. Uh, but I do believe that for such an iconic show, uh, show mm -hmm. you know, it's like basically the second in the world after the Olympia, mm -hmm. uh, to drop three divisions, you know, it's, uh, mm -hmm. I think that it's, um, it's kind of painful for the athletes yeah. that compete uh, yeah, uh, yes, in that division. Absolutely. You know, and I mean, women's physique, amazing division, and um, athletic, and all of us are athletic, but the one, the two that don't wear heels, women's bodybuilding and, and uh, women's physique were removed, and so that's not a good look, I think. You know, I, I share kind of what you said of, you know, the Arnold is, you know, revered as the second, you know, most prestigious show. And, um, you know, I think that along with that, there comes a, um, another layer of responsibility. Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. I, you know, I share the argument that all the categories should be represented, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know, but one thing that I, you know, this is bodybuilding, we're a family. Mm -hmm, you know, yeah. we have the fans, we have the, the, the sponsors, mm -hmm. we have the promoters, we have us as the athletes, um, you know, and sometimes you have to have these family discussions, mm -hmm. um, you know, yes. so and it, I, I don't, you know, I would hate for anybody to, mm -hmm. to look at this and take it as, you know, um, a way to like put a jab at Arnold or anything like that. That's because, right. You know, he's, he's an icon. I, I you know, yes. grew up watching his movies. When I got into bodybuilding, you know, I obviously, you know, watched his bodybuilding and things sure. like that. And so, you know, <clears throat> I do think that it is unfortunate that those categories mm -hmm. were taken out, mm -hmm. um, women's physique. Yes. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that they do the right thing and that they yeah. reinstill it, um, you know, in the next year. And yeah, years to well, come. we all appreciate when you said layer of responsibility. Oh, yeah. The thing is, is that when you won that title overnight, you now have a responsibility. Some win the title and don't feel as though they have a responsibility, but you are the current champion. And so there is that responsibility as well as, to me, there's a responsibility for Arnold. You know, he is seven times Mr. Olympia. He has daughters. He, you know, so, so yes, there's a responsibility. And I like what you're saying about having this family discussion. And, it, and it's really easy for people to not really understand because if you, you're not walking in your shoes and you're the current champion, you have a responsibility. And I have very mad respect for you doing what you're doing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And talking about that, what are your plans for this year? This year is, so I'm mainly gonna prep for um, this Olympia coming mm -hmm. up. It's at the end of the year. Um, so we had a little bit more time from October of yeah. 2021 to now December 2022. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my main focus is just going back um, to get that third in a row Olympia title. Um, and everything else aside of that is kind of just secondary, I guess. Mm -hmm. Who do you see out there as the main competition? I see this category as being probably one of the fastest growing categories mm -hmm. with probably some of the highest quality mm -hmm. competition. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just say I really need to just bring my A game every single year because I always use myself as an example. You know, I kind of came out of nowhere, out of the shadows, and just like became mm -hmm. this champion. Um, so I'm always just working to, you know, be my best, always improve, and just know that, you know, I was on the other side of it. I know how hard those girls are working. Oh yeah. Um, and so I just have to work that much harder. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think that Shanique Grant will come back? You know, I What's don't. What's your take on it? <laughs> I, I don't know if she will. Um, you know, she was, you know set her reasons out pretty clearly. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure she's probably, you know, doing, you know, whatever she loves. And, you know, if she decides to come back, then that would be great. And if not, then that's obviously mm -hmm. what she wants. And so that would be great too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. So if do you have a plan, like what do you plan for long term in the sport? How many titles do you want to achieve? When do you think you're going to return? If everything, if everything was in a perfect world, how would this unfold? I would just compete until I can't compete anymore. 
um, or until I get sick of it. And I don't see either one of those happening anytime <laughs> soon. Um, you know, just a long time. You know, I really, I love this sport. Um, you know, I used to say, you know, I'm very young, very young in this sport. And I'm not so young in it anymore in the yet. sense of, yep. well, I'm seasoned now. Yes. You know, I'm a two-time champion. Exactly. I've been in it for about, I've been competing for about six years. Um, so, you know, I would, I would love to continue that for, you know, several, several more. Um, I feel like I'm probably about halfway through. So, um, you know, just, just a long time. Mm -hmm. So in the end of it, you know, like what, what is the legacy you want behind? In the, in the future, you know, when you have retired, what is the image that an industry wants to have about Sarah Villegas? I want people obviously to see me as a great competitor, you know, mm -hmm. see my physique and be like, wow. You know, um, Linda and I were talking mm -hmm. right before this and talking about her physique and her robot routine and, <laughs> you know, things that are just like everybody knows it. Yeah. And you just, um, you know, you just kind of sit there and admire, like in mm -hmm. awe, wow. Mm -hmm. um, so I want that. But then also a lot of the things that we talked about today, you know, somebody who, who really loves bodybuilding and who really um, did everything that they could to be both this Miss Olympia on stage and then also off stage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's really important to invest back into things that you love and mm -hmm. that have, you know, given you a lot um, because when everybody gives, everybody wins, mm -hmm. you know, and so to just sit back and like collect trophies, that's, it's mm -hmm. not really for that fun either. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, I, I love competing. I love um, getting to like meet people who come up and say, mm -hmm. oh my God, you know, I mm -hmm. look up to you and this and that. And that just, I think that's probably one of the, the biggest joys that I've got out of being Miss Olympia is like when, you know, I meet people and they come and they say, you know, oh, I, you know, I want to look like you one day mm -hmm. or, you know, you inspire me to do this yeah. or that. It's, it's so, so humbling that like there are these real people out there that just mm -hmm. like look up you, you yourself, mm -hmm. you know, you're, mm -hmm. um, so to know that like you have an impact on other people already. Mm -hmm. um, so just to, to have that last for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Well, this is a, that's a beautiful goal. What can I say? Yeah, beautiful legacy. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're on the right path. That's for sure. You. you are. I mean, I, I remember at the um, press conference before you won, and you were talking to, to Bob Chicarilla, and you took the mic, and I was like, wow, just really impressed with your confidence and your, your presence and uh, your perfect example, role model for what that title is, you know? And so I'm so pleased to have this opportunity to sit and have a conversation. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me uh -huh. because, you know, like I already said, you know, I, I, I do try very hard um, to just do exactly what you said, to be, you know, a role model and a representative and show people, you know, how to be as an athlete and then mm -hmm. how to be, you know, just a good human, just be a good person mm -hmm. to everybody that you meet. Um, and like I said, just give back and do things that you're passionate mm -hmm. about and, and, you know, invest in things that you mm -hmm. love. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yep, thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your personality and your depth and those layers mm -hmm. that are there under yeah. Sarah Villegas. Thank so thank you for being here with us and for, for sharing everything with our viewers. Yeah. And we're looking forward to seeing you on stage this year and see what you bring and we'll support you and I'll root for you. Yes. <laughs> thank you guys. Yes. Thank you guys so much for having me. We're a big me. fan. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Likewise. And you guys, we'll see you on our next episode of FemFlex Friday. Mm -hmm.